Hey, what's up? I'm Brett with Premier Guitar. I'm here in Elslip, Illinois at Peterson Tuners. I'm here with Chris, and check it out. A lot of people think they know tuning, and I want to get into a little tuning 102. Um, I use a, a, a strobe tuner, and oftentimes I have a lot of questions about intonation and how to properly do it, and uh, I thought maybe we could talk a little bit about that today. Well, I don't use a strobe tuner, so... You're just naturally in tuner, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> tuner. I've got a few. Uh, the only few at home. Uh, a, a couple yeah. at home. Here's a question. This comes to mind. A lot of guys go to set intonation on their guitars, right? And some people, um, you know, everybody kind of kind of understands that you should hold the guitar in its playing position as opposed to laying down flat. Sure, sure. And that's that, that's an accurate that's assumption. That's accurate, yeah. Okay. But what about this? Some guys will hit their open string, and then they'll fret down on the 12th fret, and some guys will, uh, rather than doing that, they'll hit the harmonic on the 12th fret and fret down on the 12th fret to, you know, see how far in or out, sharp or flat they sure, need to go. Sure, sure. What's the right way to do it? Well, right way, that's pretty decisive, and, and there's really two schools of thought. Okay. Uh, the preferred way, and for me, is is to is to do the harmonic on the twelfth fret, and then also fret the twelfth fret. Mm -hmm. Now, really, if you think about when you're setting intonation, all you're you're really really trying to do is make sure that the exact center of that string mathematically really lies over the top of the twelfth fret. Okay. When you do the harmonic, you're you're activating that note and you're producing an overtone. When you fret there. You're activating the fundamental at that option. Sure. You want those to match. But you also want the the open string to be a mathematical um, mathematically related to the harmonic as well. Sure. So I prefer to to activate the harmonic and then fret at that fret as well and make sure that those match exactly because that tells you that the twelfth fret is exactly the center of my string and therefore over the course of the fretboard mathematically all those notes should also then be well. And then when you say exactly the center of your string, you're talking about the distance between the nut, the tailpiece, or I mean not the tailpiece, I'm sorry, the bridge. The bridge, exactly. And the 12th fret being the exact center point. Right, that should be dead center. Where where that note falls, o or that string falls over the fret should be the center of your string. Yeah. Because you want, you want that note to... Now, let's talk about um, when you're adjusting your intonation and you need to uh, move your pitch sharp or flat, the saddle moving back and forth is what makes that adjustment mm -hmm. and you know obviously we can see well that's adjusting the end point right uh, which has a relationship to that to center. The center right so. so the center as you as you make the string longer mm -hmm. obviously the center is going to move up fret if you will right and it's going to be it's going to be closer to the bridge that center point okay I got it I got it so now, that, and that's the reason of adjusting those lengths is to get that center point to then fall over but obviously every time you do that, then you need to retune the open string to figure that out. Okay, got it. So really, there's not a, a rock solid answer. There's two schools of thoughts, as you said. Right. The open string comes into play at some point. Right. The harmonic, the 12th fret, um, because those are closer in relation frequency-wise and center. Correct. Correct. Um, another thing that came to mind um, was talking about a player's attack. Okay. Some people will tell you, you know, hey, I'm a heavy-handed player, I hit my chords pretty hard, or I dig down, you know, a lot of attack here, or a lot of pick attack. Some guys have a really light touch, and sure. I know uh, just from being around different luthiers or different guitar techs and things like that, um, a lot of people tell you you should, you know, adjust to that player's intensity. Mm -hmm. So if you're setting your intonation, in other words, um, if I play hard, I need to grab my, my plectrum, my pick, um, <laughs> And I need to rail down pretty hard to have a more accurate, accurate representation of what I'm doing yeah. uh, when I'm actually playing. Is that the case, or should you tune it with a, a normal attack, or how, how do you approach this? Well, again, I'd like to give you a definitive answer, but, but I don't think there is one there. Because as you know, too, th that attack that you make on the string is going gonna, is gonna to vary on your dynamic even. So mm -hmm. if you're playing a softer passage, I mean, that's, that's going to be different, and really in the end result, intonation or... The tone of it, the pitch of that note is going to is going to vary by how hard you hit it. If you are a heavy-handed player, what I would recommend, and one of the things that's great about using a Peterson tuner, is you can actually measure how your heavy-handedness affects the resultant tone, affects the the, the pitch in a, in a fast passage. If you play hard and the, the resultant pitch is sharper, well, how much sharper? So well, you can actually take 
the wheel or the LCD display, which right. I definitely want to get into that a little bit too sure, and talk sure, about yeah. the way the bars move. You can actually take that and measure within sense of within of, sense, yeah. of how sharp you're actually playing when you play that note. If you want to get down to it within with one, one tenth of a cent within one, <laughs> on one the newer of tuners cent. of how sharp it makes you, and then you may want to set up your guitar a little lower to compensate for the fact that you are heavy handed and that tends to push you sharp, therefore you arrive back at zero. And some people then don't prefer to do that because when they're playing, uh, you know, less heavy and they're playing softer in a, in a you know, less volume passage, then it, it, it stays at zero. So ultimately what you're saying is it's an investigation into finding out uh, wh which path works best for that guitar player exactly. to achieve that end result. Exactly. You could tune uh, w with more attack um, just to re-represent your playing, or you could go in and measure how mm -hmm. sharp you're actually hitting the string as okay. opposed to somebody with a light touch undertune to compensate for it. A and what kind of, of style you're playing as well in terms of are you playing lead? Are you playing rhythm? Are you playing chordal stuff? Because you may uh, buzz through a solo heavy-handedly and you, all your notes might be a little sharp, but what about when you just let that chord ring out? Now, do you want that to be flat because you, you tuned it down to compensate for your for sharpness solo? and your okay. heavy handedness? So oh. it, it, and it's really some happy medium. A lot of people will call it and say, well, yeah, I know that I'm this heavy handed and it pushes me this much sharp. So what I do is I compensate only half that much so that I have some kind of happy medium. So at least I might be one cent sharp of pitch or one cent flat of sure. pitch depending on depending on what I'm playing. But I'm closer to zero than two is on either end. Sure. But with the level of... Uh, accuracy and sophistication that you guys offer, um, it really allows people to drill down um, in a real-time sense, if you will, and and split hairs. And, exactly. exactly. Um, maybe to the human ear, no matter where you wind up in that, that little realm, I mean, it's going to sound really, really accurate, true tune, your intonation is going to be great. Right. Um, but it is about finding your path with it, I guess. Exactly. And a, and a lot of people s even use it as a, a performance tool. Because you can see your tuning so quickly in real time, do the real time tuning process that, that we use, that a lot of people on stage will keep an eye on that. I'm a bass player myself. If I've got an open string and I'm, I'm riding out on it, I'm going to check down and make sure that halfway through that gig, I'm, I'm still there. So It's not just a before the gig or before the tune thing. It's but a, it's while it's happening. It could too. be while it's happening as well. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.